Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of BSV Reads the Bhagavad Gita. This is going to be chapter 3. <clears throat> Alright. Chapter 3 is entitled Virtue in Work. Arjuna, thou whom all mortals praise, Janardana, if meditation be a nobler thing than action, wherefore then, great Kassava, dost thou impel me this dreadful fight? Now am I by thy doubtful speech disturbed? Tell me one thing, and tell me certainly, by what road shall I find the better end? Krishna, I told thee, blameless Lord, there be paths shown to this world, two schools of wisdom. First, the Sankhyas, which doth save in way of works prescribed by reason. Next, the Yog, which binds attain by meditation, spiritually. Yet these are one. No man shall scape from act by shunning action. Nay, and none shall come by mere renouncements unto perfectness. Nay, and no jot of time, at any time, rests any actionless. His nature's law compels him, even unwilling, into act, for thought is act in fancy. He who sits suppressing all the instruments of flesh, yet in his idle heart thinking on them, plays the inept and guilty hypocrite. But he who, with strong body-serving mind, gives up his mortal powers to worthy work, not seeking gain, Arjuna, such an one is honorable, do thine allotted task. Work is more excellent than idleness. The body's life proceeds not, lacking work. There is a task of holiness to do, unlike world-binding toil, which bindeth not the faithful soul. Such earthly duty do free from desire, and thou shalt well perform thy heavenly purpose. Spake Prajapati in the beginning, when all men were made, and with mankind the sacrifice, do this, work, sacrifice, increase and multiply with sacrifice, increase and multiply with sacrifice. This shall be Kamaduk, your cow of plenty, giving back her milk of all abundance. Worship the gods thereby, the gods shall yield thee grace. Those meets ye the gods will grant a labor, when it pays tithes in the altar flame. But if one eats fruits of the earth, rendering to kindly heaven no gift of toil that thief steals from this world. Who eat of food after their sacrifice are quit of fault, but they that spread a feast all for themselves eat sin and drink of sin. By food the living live, food comes of rain, and rain comes by the pious sacrifice, and sacrifice is paid with tithes of toil. Thus action is of Brahma, who is one, the only, all-pervading, at all times present in sacrifice. He that abstains to help the rolling wheels of this great world, letting his idle sense, lives a lost life, shameful and vain, existing for himself, self-concentrated, serving alone. No part hath he in aught, nothing achieved. Nothing wrought or unwrought toucheth him, no hope of help for all the living things of earth depends on him. Therefore, thy task prescribed with spirit unattached gladly perform, since in performance of plain duty man mounts to his highest bliss. By works alone, Janak and the ancient saints reached blessedness. Moreover, for the upholding of thy kind, action thou shouldest embrace. What the wise choose the unwise people take, what best men do the multitude will follow. Look on me, thou son of Pritha. In the three wide worlds I am not bound to any toil. No height awaits to scale, no gift remains to gain. Yet I act here, and if I acted not, earnest and watchful. Those that look to me for guidance, sinking back to sloth again because I slumbered, would decline from good, and I should break earth's order and commit her offspring unto ruin Barata. Even as the unknowing toil, wedded to sense, 
so let the enlightened toil, since freed, but set to bring the world deliverance and its bliss. Not sowing in those simple, busy hearts seeds of despair. Yea, let each play his part in all he finds to do with unyoked soul. All things are everywhere by nature wrought in interaction of the quatis. The fool, cheated by self, thinks, This I did, and that I wrought. But ah, thou strong-armed prince! A better lesson mind, knowing the play of visible things within the world of sense, and how the qualities must qualify, standeth aloof even from his acts. The untaught live mixed with them, knowing not nature's way of highest aims unwitting, slow and dull. Those make thou not to stumble, having the light, but all thy dues discharging, for my sake, with meditation centered inwardly, seeking no profit, satisfied, serene, heedless of issue, fight. They who shall keep my ordinance thus, the wise and willing hearts have quittance from all issue of their acts. But those who disregard my ordinance, thinking they know, know not, and fall to loss, confused and foolish. Sooth, the instructed one doth of his kind, following what fits him most, and lower creatures of their kind, in vain contending against the law. Needs must it be the objects of the sense will stir the sense to like and dislike, yet the enlightened man yields not to these, knowing them enemies. Finally, this is better, that one do his own task as he may, even though he fail, than take tasks not his own, though they seem good. To die performing duty is no ill, but who seeks other roads shall wander still. Arjuna Yet tell me, teacher, by what force doth man go to his ill, unwilling, as if one pushed him that evil path? Krishna Kama it is, passion it is, born of the darknessness, which pusheth him, mighty of appetite, sinful, and strong is this man's enemy. As smoke blots the white fire, as clinging rust mars the bright mirror, as the womb surrounds the babe unborn, so is the world of things foiled, soiled, enclosed in this desire of flesh. The wise fall caught in it, the unresting foe it is of wisdom, wearing countless forms. Fair but deceitful, subtle as a flame. Sense, mind, and reason, these, O Kunti's son, are booty for it. In its play with these it maddens man, beguiling, blinding him. Therefore, thou noblest child of Bharata, govern thy heart, constrain the entangled sense, resist the false, soft sinfulness which saps knowledge and judgment. Yet the world is strong, but what discerns it stronger, and the mind strongest, and high over all the ruling soul. Wherefore, perceiving him who reigns supreme, put force full force of soul in thy own soul. Fight, vanquish foes and doubts, dear hero. Slay what haunts thee in fond shapes, and would betray. Here endeth chapter 3 of the Bhagavad Gita entitled Karma Yoga or The Book of Virtue in Work. This has been a Be Still Voice Works production. Thank you for listening.